Hello guys, I am Sujal Bafna. I work as an embedded engineer in MIT Tech Team and the topic for the video today is open loop versus closed loop systems. So before we begin the comparison of open loop and closed loop systems, let's first know each of them. So let's begin with open loop systems. So what are open loop systems? An open loop system is a sys control system where the output is not fed back into the input. That means the system runs on predetermined inputs without adjusting the value of actual output. A simple example of an open loop system is a toaster. When you set the time and start the toaster, it operates for a set amount of time regardless of whether the toast is burnt or it is left undercooked. This means that it does not provide a feedback system where the time is set according to the browning of the bread. So let's look at some of the advantages of open loop system. First, its simplicity. Open loop systems are very simple to design without being the need of designing complex feedback mechanisms. Second, they are very cost effective as the cost of feedback me mechanisms are re is reduced. And third, their speed. Open loop systems are faster as there are no feedback delays to count for. In robotics, we need both high accuracy and precision. And hence, we use feedback. But do you think only feedback from the output is enough? No, right? We also need to change the input according to the feedback we receive from the output. So let's revise our concepts. You have your input, you have your output, and you are providing and feedback from the output to the input. This whole system together makes the closed loop system. Let's take an example for the same. You are running a race blindfolded. You know the start point and the end point. The result could be you could go off track or you could bump into someone else. But now take a second scenario that there is a person who is constantly updating you on your position or your state. This will now help you achieve the result which is desired or finish the race. In the video, you saw a motor running in open loop where the change in input caused a change in output wherein the input were voltage and current and the output was velocity of motor. But if you applied the load, you saw a change in velocity which is not optimal for precision and accuracy required in robotics. This was an example of motor in closed loop where the motor tried to maintain its speed regardless of the load applied to it. Now that we know what a closed loop system is, let's explore how it functions. In a closed loop system, a sensor at the output monitors the process and provides feedback to the input. This feedback helps adjust the input to maintain the desired output. But the key question is, how does the system decide how much to change the input? This is where controllers come into play. Controllers evaluate the feedback and determine the necessary adjustment to the input to ensure the output stays consistent even in the face of disturbance. In robotics, many types of controllers are used, but one of the most popular and easy to use controller is the PID controller. PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. A PID controller combines these three elements to provide smooth and precise control over a system. Let's break down each term and see how they work with example. First, proportional control. The proportional component adjusts the input in proportion to the current error, which is the difference between the desired and actual output. If the error is large, the controller makes a big correction. If the error is small, the correction is smaller. Let's understand with an example of a two-wheel self-balancing robot. If this self-balancing robot tilts forward by 5 degrees, the P controller commands the wheels to move forward proportional to the angle to bring it back to an upright position. So what is the problem with P controller if used alone? If the correction is too small, the self-balancing robot won't stabilize fast enough. If it is too large, it may overshoot and tilt backwards. So here, I and D controllers compensate for the same. So moving forward to I and D controller. The integral component focuses on the accumulated error. 
over time. If the system has consistent small errors even after proportional corrections, the integral term adds up these errors and adjusts the input to eliminate them. The integral control component focuses on the accumulated error over time. If the system has consistent small errors even after proportional correction, the integral term adds up this error and adjusts the input to eliminate them. In the previous example, the self balancing robot is still leaning slightly after several seconds. The eye controller adds more power to the wheels to counteract this accumulated error and bring it perfectly upright. Lastly, the derivative control. The derivative control component predicts future errors by monitoring how fast the error is changing. It applies corrections based on the rate of change of error, helping the system respond quickly to sudden changes and preventing overshoot. So if the self-balancing robot starts leaning forward quickly, the D controller reacts immediately by accelerating the wheels forward, preventing the tilt from increasing further. To summarize, the PID controller on self-balancing robot combines all the three elements. P brings the self-balancing robot back to a stable position. I removes the small persistent drifts over time. D predicts certain changes to prevent overshoot and keep movements smooth. The self-balancing robot can stay balanced by constantly adjusting its wheel speed in response to tilt and movement, ensuring smooth and stable operation. Let's quickly review the key concepts we covered in the video. Open loop system, a system that operates without feedback, where the input is applied without considering the output. Feedback, information from output that is sent back to the input to help maintain the desired output. Closed loop system, a system that uses feedback to continuously adjust its input and achieve the desired output. Controllers, devices or algorithms that decide how, by how much the input needs to be changed based on feedback. PID controller, a powerful control mechanism combining proportional, integral and derivative elements maintain stability and accuracy in dynamic systems. With this knowledge, you can now understand how to decide which type of system, open or closed loop, works best in different scenarios. That wraps up today's video. Stay tuned because next week we'll be back with another exciting topic, DC motors versus BLDC motors. What they are, how they differ and which one to choose for your projects.